Oh, that's not good. Very bad. What's up, guys? Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to another video. Uh, we've got a work truck in the shop today with some uh, pretty serious problems, but we're going to put some pretty cool uh, parts on it. Uh, so pretty excited about that. Excited to bring you all along with me. Um, we're going to go over here in just a second, but uh, real quick, start of this video. Just want to tell you guys how awesome you are for tuning in, watching all the videos. Uh, we've almost netted an extra 1,000 subscribers in just a little over a week, so we're just about to cross that 2,000 subscriber line. And I just, I'm just over the moon, guys. So I just want to take this first second of the video to tell you guys that I love y'all. You guys are awesome. Thank you so much. And let's go over this awesome work truck that we got in the shop today. Uh, I don't know if you can see the, uh, it's about, so far, about a quart of oil that we're just steadily losing out of the uh, muffler back here. Shoo. Oh, oh yeah, that's not, that's not good. Not good. Very bad. I uh, believe we've tracked a nice line all the way. Oh, yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Well, you know, it is what it is. But uh, if you don't know what that means, our turbo has left the chat. So we have purchased a nice, beautiful KC unit for it, uh, which we are super excited to get slapped on. Also went ahead and picked up an exhaust back pressure valve delete pedestal for it. Uh, I like to always change pedestal when I do this just because uh, these things leak like no other when they go bad. Uh, and we also uh, don't have the valve in here anymore. So I uh, like to get rid of all that bull. We don't need it anymore. Uh, we're also waiting on an SMB intake for it. Uh, because you know these work truck guys, they just love, love to put some awesome air filters on these things. Uh, like our oil cooler video where we had a piece of PVC pipe. I'm pretty sure this one also has that. So, let's see what we got going on here. Yeah, let's see. Oh, it's not even on. That's awesome. Woo! <laughs> but, uh, yeah, our turbo is absolutely smoked. But uh, I'm going to take you along with me here, try and show as many good pointers as I can. Uh, so once again, thank you guys so much, and let's tackle this. Yeah, we're going to get a little pig mat action down here, because uh, we're not slowing down at all. Oh, Lord. Lord. Just, uh, we'll just put, put that there. You take care of that, okay? <laughs> so y'all might be wondering... Why are we going to put a pretty nice uh, billet KC unit on this? Well, that would be because a stock replacement turbo from Ford uh, is $1,500 by itself. Uh, no O-rings, nothing to go with it. And this is a stage one turbo that we have picked up from KC. We absolutely love our KC units. Uh, shout out to Charlie. Uh, he makes some really top of the line stuff. I've run... Uh, the stage three unit on the black truck before we put the compounds on it. And I also had a drop in on the white truck over there. And uh, we sprayed an ungodly amount of nitrous through both of those trucks and they never had a single problem. So like I said, we love our KC units. Uh, so this ran us with the turbo itself. This is a stage one, uh, the delete pedestal and an SMB intake ran us $1,600 guys. That, uh, that is only $100 more than a stock replacement charger from Ford. So uh, uh, we like to uh, do some forced upgrades here. So uh, we're going to slap this thing on there. And uh, with a new intake and everything, it should live a nice, long, happy life. But uh, that's why we do this, just because uh, the price on the stock one was just a little bit too much for us to uh, stomach. And uh, if we can uh, put uh, better parts on it for less money uh that's always what we're gonna opt to do so let's get the light slapped on this thing and let's get it tore down i'm going to try to make this informative 
as much as I can, uh, but also try to not make it as long as I've made some of my other videos. So uh, I'm going to go over everything that I'm going to pop loose real quick, and then I'm going to throw it on time lapse. Uh, I think that might go a little smoother. Uh, might make it to where it's not an hour long video, whatever it may be. Uh, you know, just so it's easier for y'all to watch. But um, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my batteries disconnected because I do not want to arc anything on our glow plug uh, module there. So we'll get that off and then I'm gonna go over here. I'm going to take my map sensor loose and lay it over on top of the engine here, uh, just so it's easier for my CAC pipes to come out. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and buzz all my CAC pipes off. So like I've said in all my other videos, uh, we're gonna take only this clamp loose. We do not wanna take this one loose on any of the boots because we wanna keep it sealed. Uh, usually what'll happen is you take this loose and uh, this pipe will start blowing the boot. So we don't want to deal with that. So we're just going to take it loose at the spider here and then down here on the actual intercooler. And then like I've stated in other videos as well, we're going to take that clamp and we're just going to slide it up onto the intercooler snout and leave it with the intercooler. Uh, do the same thing on this side, uh, get it off. And you're probably going to have to go ahead and get this battery tray out of here. Um, just make your life a little bit easier. This one is a pain with the power steering pump. Uh, then I'm going to get my intake off. It'll be eight mils. Uh, you'll have eight millimeter here, here, and just get this whole thing out of here. We don't need it anymore because uh, we have an SMB intake to throw on. And then once we're done there, I'm going to go down and then right there, let's see if I can't show you, right there, we have two, uh, worm clamps that hold the actual boots for the spider on. So once we have our pipes off and everything, we're gonna go ahead and take everything loose off the spider here, lay it down on the engine, and then take our clamp loose right here. So we have a clamp there, two clamps there, two clamps over here, and we're gonna pull this whole spider out. And once we're out, then we're gonna go ahead and start working with the turbo. But I'm going to start with that first. And uh, that's what we're gonna be doing here. I'm gonna throw you on time-lapse and I'm gonna get all this busted off and then we will touch base when we are ready to start with the pulling of the charger. So we have made it down to our charger where we're ready to pull it. Um, uh, little, uh, nice little tip information for you. Make sure you uh, change your intercooler oil, guys. I mean, you got to make sure that uh, this this intercooler oil is not that dark. I mean, come on now. I mean, we all know that you know your pipe should be slam full of oil, and uh, that's a joke. So insert funny laughing meme here yeah no that's a joke uh there definitely should not be uh this amount of oil in any of your cac pipes so uh believe this truck is now going to be getting an intercooler uh i was hoping that maybe just the exhaust side of the turbo failed as far as the seals went and maybe it was just pumping the oil into the exhaust but that is not going to be the case uh as you can tell not good at all we are full of oil. Um, yeah. So uh, I highly, highly suggest that uh, if you do have a turbo failure to this extent, uh, you're going to want to go ahead and um, 
probably change intercooler and everything, or at least pull it and clean it. Uh, you don't want your truck to run away, and it will run away on uh, that amount of oil being in the intercooler system. So uh, just a heads up on that. Uh, like I said, that was a joke. Um, nor a little bit of oil down in the pipe is okay. Uh, it's pretty normal with uh, the way the crankcase system is routed on six liters and everything and seven threes. Uh, so a little bit in the boot is okay, but uh, if you have a uh, trail from where you uh, pulled it out, uh, definitely no bueno. So uh, just a heads up. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull our turbo. So uh, up here on our turbo, get my flashlight. Uh, try and dim this for you, there we go. Uh, we got two 15 millimeter bolts right here in the middle where my flashlight's pointing. Uh, we're gonna wanna head, go ahead and pull those and then we will have an 11 millimeter clamp on our down pipe there. And then the same, you won't be able to see it uh, back there. Same clamp right there in the back for our up pipes. Uh, we're gonna take all that loose. Um, at this point, I highly, highly, highly recommend even if you just go rent one, whatever it may be, go get an air hammer and a long chisel bit. I'm telling you right now, hammering those clamps with a hammer and a pry bar sucks. They You don't get a good enough strike on it. You don't vibrate it enough to pop them clamps loose. And you're going to spend hours sitting here and fighting it. So please listen to me. Please go get an air hammer. Get a long chisel bit. Give her a little bump and the clamps will pop loose. And you'll just be in such a much better mood. So... We're gonna buzz those loose, get our 15 millimeter bolts out, and we're gonna get this turbo pulled out and show you the extent of the failure. Well, guys, uh, we got our turbo out, and uh, I believe this is probably one of the worst ones I've seen. Shoo, uh, let's see if you can. Oh. Ah! Yeah, so uh, that's a little excessive. So, not good. Woo! We got the good old UPS bringing us in. Our intake finally showed up, so this will also be going on our truck, so woo! I think we have the best UPS driver ever, he demand. But uh, let's get this turbo pedestal yanked and uh, start getting ready to clean up and get everything else new put in here. So anyway, moving on here, uh, we're going to go ahead and get our pedestal pulled here, so we'll have... Uh, four 10 millimeter bolts here. Oh, and also uh, our middle bolts here, our pedestal to tur our turbo two pedestal bolts were 13 millimeters. I got that wrong, they weren't 15s. So just a heads up there. Uh, cool little thing is this truck already has bellowed up pipes, so that's pretty awesome. Uh, shout out to whoever did that. Uh, they look like they're in good shape. Uh, we'll check bolts, make sure they're tight. Uh, if you're tackling this, uh highly suggest you pick up a set of those uh because nine times out of ten uh your stock up pipes are blown out they've got a little white uh like a kind of like a fiber gasket that always blows out on these things you're right there you might as well tackle it now uh so just a heads up on that uh and also i uh, just want to show y'all this is why we get rid of these uh pedestals you see that rod that comes out of the back of the pedestal there that controls the flap your exhaust back pressure valve flap in the actual uh, hot side of the charger. This is the biggest oil leak area that I have seen on 7.3 power strokes. Um, people will always think that they have rear main issues. They do not. It's very, very rare you ever see a rear main failure in a 7.3. It is always that turbo pedestal pouring oil. So uh, if you don't... Uh, don't use that uh, flap or you don't live in a super cold climate area where it's necessary. Uh, I suggest you just go ahead and junk it, get you a delete pedestal 
and uh, if you do not put a new turbo on it, you will need the adapter for the hot side housing. So just a heads up there. Um, recommend going ahead doing that as well while we're here. Uh, the rod is actually uh, falling out of our stock charger there, which I have also never seen. So, uh, yeah. So. Let's get this turbo pedestal pulled out of here and let's get uh, this area kind of cleaned up and uh, ready for new parts. guys so now that we have our turbo uh set down in the bay here uh what we're gonna do is we're going to get our new bolt started into the pedestal i just want to uh get them started and i'll leave them uh you know not fully tight and then that way we can go ahead and move to the back here and we need to focus really heavily on lining up our up pops back here uh there is a pin so um, we want to make sure that our turbo set into that pin and uh, we'll, this is the probably the most important part of this install is uh, you want to make sure that you have a perfectly flush seat. So uh, looking at the actual turbo housing and the up pipes, you don't want to see any gap whatsoever there. You want them to kind of mate together without the clamp because what will happen is you put that uh, V-band clamp on there and suck them up that way. Uh, you can't rely on that to suck everything together it won't do it uh and then you'll have a big exhaust leak and you'll think the turbo's junk you know when in reality it was just you know uh, installer air so that is probably the most important part right there that you need to focus on and also before we put our turbo in uh we want to go ahead and squirt some oil uh hyperlube whatever it may be uh down into our actual feed hole up underneath this turbo and I like to spin the actual shaft and everything get some oil going in there uh, that way everything's kind of lubed up real nice and good before you fire it up that way it's not dry starting but uh, let's jump on here let's get these bolts sucked down and let's start fighting with this v-band all right guys so sorry I had to uh, jump off yesterday it is the following day I had a, another truck show up I had to jump on real quick um, uh, up pipes uh, when you're fighting these it is a lot easier whenever you have bellowed up pipes because the old ones that are not bellowed really really suck uh, to try and maneuver uh, I like to leave everything loose on the charger uh, that I can and try to fight it that way and see if I can't get them to mate up perfectly uh, but if they're absolutely not not cooperating whatever it may be uh, I have found that on six liters and these as well, these are a little bit more uh, uh, of a pain. Uh, go down there and loosen up your actual manifold to up pipe bolts. Uh, I suggest soaking them down. They do like to break, especially with these trucks being older. But uh, with loosening those up, you get a lot more room. Don't take them all the way out. But uh, just loosen them up and it gives you more room to fight it and maneuver it. But leave everything loose. And the first thing you're going to tighten is your V-band clamp on your up pipes. Once you have it nice and tight, uh, then you can go ahead and move on to tightening up your uh, turbo to pedestal bolts. And then if you took your up pipe bolts loose, uh, go back down there and tighten them up. But uh, we're pretty much uh, wrapped up as far as that goes. Uh, we're going to get uh, all these nasty parts cleaned up, um, get all the oil out of them, and then I'll move on to... Uh, Put an intercooler in this thing but uh there she is she fits really really well i love these things and uh 
we'll uh, get this thing slapped back together. All right, so we are all cleaned up here, nice and pretty. I uh, should have done some uh, YouTube magic where you snap your fingers and it and magically, they magically turn out clean. Wouldn't that be something if life was that easy? But uh, we're all cleaned up. So now we are ready to go ahead and reassemble here. I've got my intercooler swapped out with a CSF one. Our old ones over there slapped full of oil. Um, this is a pretty easy change if you need to change it. Just uh, you have to pull this uh, uh, brace out and take all your radiator mounts loose and everything like that. It's not a horrible job, uh, but that's not, we're just gonna make us a turbo install video. But uh, we're gonna slap this thing back together, get an oil change in it and everything and uh, see how she sounds. guys that's gonna wrap it up for me on this video uh thank you for tuning in thank you for sticking with me through it uh i'm gonna try and do uh, most of it on time lapse uh, so it's not a outrageously long video uh a lot of people don't ever watch it through all the way to the end so i'm just trying to make it a little bit more uh friendly for everybody that watches so i tried to explain the most important really parts of going into it uh if you're putting an smb intake on uh, make sure to remember to plug your intake air temp sensor up. That's right there. Don't forget it. Make sure it goes back in the box. Uh, you will have some problem running issues if you do not. Uh, clean all your stuff up really, really good, people. I um, uh, think we're looking a whole lot better than what it came in here looking like, which is what I like to see. Uh, don't forget to put your map sensor back up and all that other good stuff. Uh, like I said on your turbo, follow all that. But um, I think, yeah, I think that's where I'm going to wrap it up. I don't want to drag you all along through an oil change and driving it. And uh, when I go drive it, it's still going to smoke like a train, white smoke, because all the oil that's in the exhaust. So that's where I'm going to close it out, guys. Thank you so, so very much for watching, subscribing. Uh, we just hit 2,000 subscribers. I mean, that is just nuts to me. Uh, we averaged over 1,000 subscribers in a little over a week. That is just insane to me where it took six months for us just to get to 1,000. So I love you guys so very much. Thank you so much for, you know, uh, taking me on this journey. And uh, I will see you guys on the next video. Bye.